Tonight, old dreams die and new dreams come to life. The promise is fulfilled. Hope gives way to joy and prayer to proclamation. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace. Our candles illuminate our story. Dawn invades midnight. The light of the world has come. And this light is a light for all, igniting a flame in the soul, warming us from within, radiating love, lighting our lives with the presence of God come alive in human flesh, within us and among us, now and always. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace. Will you pray with me? Holy Emmanuel God, the one who is with us, the one who is for us. Speak to us in this time of worship. As lights are illuminated and your story is told, may our hearts be filled once again with your hope, your peace, your joy, and your love. Enough for us and for all the world. For we pray in the name of the Christ child. Amen. Isaiah 35, 1 through 10. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it. 
the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall not break forth shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be got for God's people. No traveler, not even fool, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come up on it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there, and the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads, and they shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The Gospel of John echoes the prophet Isaiah as it speaks of Christ as the true light coming into the world. In commemoration of that coming, we light candles for the four weeks leading to Christmas and reflect on the coming of Christ. It is significant that the church has always used that language, the coming of Christ, because it speaks to a deep truth. Christ is coming. Christ is always coming, always entering a troubled world, a wounded heart. And so we light the first candle, the candle of hope, and dare to express our longing for peace, for healing, and the well-being of all creation. Loving God, as we enter this Advent season, we open all the dark places in our lives and memories to the healing light of Christ. Show us the creative power of hope. Prepare our hearts to be transformed by you, that we may walk in the light of Christ. Amen. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continuously, and there shall be endless peace. <laughs> for the throne of David and his kingdom, he will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. We light the second candle, the candle of peace. We light it knowing full well that peace is elusive, and in some parts of the world, it is almost completely absent. Yet in the season of Advent, we trust that God is never absent from us. God is always preparing something new. And even where there is war and discord, whether between countries, within families, or within our own hearts, God is present, gently leading us to new possibilities. Loving God, in this time of preparation and planning, we thank you for the hope and peace you unfailingly offer us. Show us the creative power of hope. Teach us the peace that comes from justice. Prepare our hearts to be transformed by you, that we may walk in the light of Christ. Amen. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greetings this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your room and bear a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of, of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who has said to be 
barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. We now light the third candle, the candle of joy. As we light this candle, we may ask how we can find joy in a season where joy is hard to come by. Our traditional sources of joy, family gatherings, holiday parties, festive events, even worship gatherings, have been canceled or modified from years past. Where is the joy in all of this? Maybe Mary was asking the same, as the angel foretold the birth of Jesus, asking her to be part of something wonderful, yet also life-altering and even dangerous. Mary had little time to prepare herself for this unexpected responsibility thrust upon her. Yet she knew that despite the difficulties, there would be great joy in the news of the coming of Christ into the world. Loving God, we open ourselves to you, trusting that this is how you made us. You created us for joy-filled hearts and lives. Show us the creative power of hope. Teach us the peace that comes from justice. Fill us with the kind of joy that cannot be contained but must be shared. Prepare our hearts to be transformed by you, that we may walk in the light of Christ. Amen. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servants. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. According to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever, and Mary remained with her about three months and then returned her home. We have lit three candles for hope, for peace, and for joy. Now we light the fourth candle, the candle of love. With this flame we signify the love of God that surrounds and fills us at all times, but that we can recognize in a special way in the Christmas story. There is no greater power than love. It is stronger than rulers and empires, stronger than grief or despair, stronger even than death. We love because God loves us. Loving God, we open ourselves to you this Christmas season. As these candles are lit, light our lives with your imagination. Show us the creative power of hope. Teach us the peace that comes from justice. Fill us with the kind of joy that cannot be contained but must be shared. Magnify your love within us. Prepare our hearts to be transformed by you, that we may walk in the light of Christ. Amen. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that the whole world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All of the old towns be registered. Uh, Joseph went, also went to the town of Nazareth in Galilee, Judea, to the city of David, called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. Why they were there? 
The time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son um, and wrapped him in the bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for him in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds who were guarding their flock at night. Then the angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy to all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a child in the bands of cloth and lying in the manger. And suddenly there was an angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God. 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 Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace, among those whom he favors. When the angels have left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, What has come to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place that the one has made us know of? So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child laying in the manger. When they saw this, they may know, have been told them of this child. I heard it. We're amazed. Okay. At what the shepherds told them. They 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 told them. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard. Glory to God! Glory to God! Glory to God! Glory to God! Hope, peace, joy, and love. Four candles. Four promises continually offered to us by God and all of them manifest in this one we light for the first time tonight, the Christ candle. In Christ we find the hope of transformation, the peace that follows justice, the joy of self-fulfillment and community, and the love that encompasses us all in our diversity, empowering us to make our own unique contribution to this world. In Christ we find light and life, and the courage to be like him, answering his call and following in his footsteps. We rejoice in God's steadfast presence in our lives, and in God's unique presence in the life of Jesus of Nazareth, born of Mary, growing through childhood into an adult ministry, in all his life manifesting the peace, love, and justice of God, his voice undimmed by the centuries, his call and his promise as clear to us as it was to his disciples so long ago. Come to us, Lord Jesus. Be born in us this night, in our hearts, our minds, our lives, May the light of your life be kindled in us and lead us to the shining truth of God with us, God for us, God in us. Amen.
with joy in our hearts because of the gift that you gave us all those years ago. Lord, we are hopeful that the world can see the love that you give, that we can share that love with the world. And we're lucky, Lord, that we are people of Easter because we know the story. We know how it ends. And we know the direction and the journey that we are on. Lord, I just ask that you bless these elements, that we may take them, receive them into our body, and pour out your love to the rest of the world. We pray all of this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. This is an open communion table. Everyone is invited to partake. We invite you to tear off a piece of bread or take one of the gluten-free wafers and to eat of it. We invite you to take a cup and to drink of it. These are the gifts of God for all of God's people.
Now he sends us out to be light to the world, sharing the gifts of God's love to all people. Let your light shine before all people, that they will glorify God in heaven. is light. Let us walk in the light as God is in the light. Go in peace. God is with you. Amen. Amen.